Hey friends, it's Sarah from She's Crafty, She Knows It, and today we're going to make a book page Christmas tree. So I'm going to start by going over all the supplies that we're going to be using. If you have any questions or you need any links, I will link all the supplies I'm using in the description below this video. But first, I have this little dowel rod. It is 10 inches long, in case you want them the same size as mine. 10 inches long and 3 16 wide. Now if you have some that are longer, like I had some already that are the same thickness, but it's just too long. I will show you real quick how to cut it to whatever length you want. Measure what length you want. And I kind of, I don't have like thick cutters right here that could cut straight through this. So if you need to cut it, you can do it like this and you just kind of like saw all the way around it. Now the one I had was already 10 inches, which makes really nice ends. But say you wanted to make three different sizes and have like a 10 inch one, an eight inch and a six inch. I would just cut it like this. So I'm just kind of like sawing around the side, squeezing in the same spot. And then eventually you're going to be able to snap it off. So obviously if you have better cutters than me, use those. Um, I think I have some nice ones somewhere like in my gardening bag, which I don't even know where that bag is right now. So I just decided to do this instead. So you just kind of get it enough that you can break it like that. So it's not hard to do at all. It leaves a, a fine enough end and that can be the end that you put in your wood slice. So I bought a whole stack of these. They were really cheap on Amazon. I'll of course link them as well. And I went ahead and drilled a hole in the center. You don't have to, you could just um, hot, hot glue it right there on there like that or use wood glue, but it was super easy to drill a hole right through it. And so I did that and that's what I'll be using. And then I have an old book that I'm gonna be using and I liked, you can do it however you want. I liked that this one, the pages were already kind of like yellowed and it was really old looking for what I want. This is gonna be perfect for it. And then I have my um, wood stars, which we're gonna be using on the top of the Christmas tree. And I have my paper cutter, which we're gonna be using to cut the pages down. And then I cut already, cause I didn't want you to sit there and have to watch me, a bunch of these little squares. Um, they're one inch squares of cardstock. So I just used two pieces all together and made a bunch. Try to slide them over. Two pieces of white cardstock. I did white so it would blend in the most. I don't think you're gonna see them at all, but I cut them down to one inch little squares and just punched a hole in the center. So those are little spacers, which we're gonna be using. Okay, I already have my hot glue gun plugged in. Last but not least, I have this big old thing called the Cropodile. If you watched a lot of my videos, you've probably seen me use it before to do eyelets or something, but it's really cool. So you can um, do eyelets. When you slide it all, to it all the way to the front, it lets you do eyelets like that, the little grommets. Um, but it also can be a hole punch and you can either punch 1 8 inch or 3 16 3 16 is perfect because it's the exact thickness of our dowel rod that we're going to be using so that way the whole of the paper will be the perfect size so to get started i'm going to move everything over to the side like i said you could start if you want to by just cutting two pieces of cardstock down into i just did one inch strips and then cut it into one inch squares so just little one inch squares and hole punch the center of that um, let me show you real quick. I wanted to mention one of the things that's great about this. If you do a lot of crafting, I love this thing. So forget the eyelets and grommets. That's great if you want to use it for that. I love it because the hole punch is in the middle and it lets you punch so deep into something. So you know how a normal hole punch, you can like only go an inch into the paper and then it hits the metal. This lets you go, it's kind of awkward to show you like this, but you can go way deep and punch like four inches in if you need to. So that makes it really, really easy to use, especially for a craft like this. So I have my book. I've already peeled the cover off so that it'd be easy for us to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll tear this page off. I forgot to mention that I'm gonna be using my heavy duty zigzag scissors. So I'll link these of course as well. These are awesome. I know a lot of the little crafting ones that have really cool edges are really great. Um, they're really cute, but they don't cut very well. These are like the um, seamstress scissors. They cut really well. They're meant more for fabric, but I'm using them for this. Um, but I love these. these. This pair specifically is really awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tear off about four pages. We're gonna need about six to eight pieces of each size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the pieces down and I'm gonna have six to eight pieces of a five inch square four and a half, four, three and a half, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, and one. So all the way down. And we're gonna do about six to eight of each one. So I have four pieces right here. We're gonna go ahead and let me pull this little thingy out. We're gonna cut this. I'm actually, I want a lot of writing on it. So I'm actually gonna start by, I think this is, 
it's six inches wide, so I'm gonna cut half an inch off each side just so that I can have mainly words, if that makes sense. And that will get me about to the five inches wide. So basically we're gonna start by just cutting it down to five inches and then go five inches right there. So there you go, a five inch square. Now it's gonna leave an odd shape that's obviously not five inches. So I can just use this for, let's see how wide it is. It's four inches. So I will use it for my four inch square. So go ahead, trim it down. You can just move your extra little pieces off to the side. Okay, so I have, there's five and four. Let me get some more pages. So I'm gonna do that again. Now obviously your book is probably gonna be different sizes than mine, so just make sure you're getting it down. And like I said, you don't have to cut it. You can just cut it straight five like this and cut it like that. I just kind of wanted the words to be a little bit centered, um, but that is not a necessary step if you don't want it to be. So I'm turning a little bit off each side rather than just one inch off of one side, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm down to five. I'm gonna do my five inch square. And then this is gonna leave me the odd shaped little piece that's perfect for a four inch square. Okay, so right there, that's already, should be about eight. I didn't count exactly, but about eight of each of those sizes. So let me get four more. Okay, now we're gonna do the four and a half inch size. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off of each side again. Okay, now I'm measuring it. Oh, it kind of got lopsided. Now I'm measuring it right at four and a half. Go four and a half again. Oh, and that was perfect. Okay, so there we go. So there, right there is eight. So that should be about eight fives, eight four and a halves, eight of my fours. And now we're gonna go on to three and a half. I might, let's see how wide this page is. Almost six inches. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep cutting the wording off a little bit. Okay. And I can save this for my smaller pieces. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Three and a half. I'm gonna leave these here for our smaller bits and go ahead and go on to three. Let me just double check that we have everything. So we have, start with the back, five inches. Four and a half, four, three and a half, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, and then the tiny little one, one. Okay, so that's all of our squares ready to go. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and trim them down. I'm gonna start and do the biggest ones first. So I'm gonna take half of them and I'm gonna cut them with my zigzag scissors. So now this doesn't have to be perfect. It's obviously gonna cut a little bit off and so your ending size is not gonna be exactly five inches, but that's okay. So just go ahead and cut all the way around it. I find this a lot easier than having to like, um, I find using the paper cutter a lot easier than having to cut with scissors a million square, like tracing a template and cutting a million little squares by hand. This just goes pretty fast doing it this way. So you're just gonna zigzag all the way around. I'm gonna scoot my little scraps to the back. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones. I'm gonna do a size at a time. So after I cut this, we'll move on to the next step so you can kind of see 
where we're going with it. Like I said, this does not have to be perfect. Doesn't even have to be perfectly straight. Nothing like that. If you have kiddos that like to cut or you want to help them practice cutting, um, this is a great little craft for them to help with. Okay, so now I have two stacks of about four pieces. I'm going to punch a hole in the center. And so I have it on the hole punch setting. If you slide it all the way to the front, that's the eyelet setting. It's on the hole punch. It's moved back to the 3 16th size, which is the size that I want. That's also the size that I use to punch the little spacer pieces, um, which like I said, is the same size as my dowel stick. So everything kind of matches up. Okay, this doesn't have to be exactly centered by any means, but I am going to use my ruler, at least in the beginning for the bigger pieces so that I know it's relatively centered. So this piece is about five inches wide. So you're gonna want the little hole to be about two and a half inches into the square, both directions. Okay. You know what, I probably can do all of them. Let's see if I can do all of them at one time. This thing is pretty heavy duty. So I'm gonna try and turn it so you can see. So you have your little hole punch. I have my little dot right there. Hopefully you can see kind of. And you just line it up. Hopefully you can see. So it's so cool that it can slide all the way in there. So you can line it up, push down. Oh, that was easy to do eight at once. Super easy. Okay, so now I have them all hole punched. I'm gonna move that to the side for a second. And like I said, we're gonna go piece by piece for a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my dowel rod right into the hole, push it down. That is nice and sturdy. So if you have a drill and you wanna do it, it took like two seconds, it was super easy. Um, I pushed it all the way through, it's basically flush. I just was able to do it with one drill bit going through one time, the same size as the dowel rod. Okay, so we're gonna start with our little spacer pieces. I'm just gonna do one, and since the hole is the same size as the dowel rod, I don't need to use glue or anything extra to hold it on. And I'm gonna do it about, trying to figure out how low, about right there. Now with these pieces, I want it to kind of look tattered. The book already looks old, and so to have old pages look so perfect and smooth, isn't that believable? This book is old, but clearly it doesn't look like it's really been read. So I'm gonna crumple them up. Optional, if you don't wanna do that, that's okay. I'm gonna kind of crumple them all. They don't have to be like super crumpled, but enough that it has a little bit of life. It'll also help the tree to, to look a little bit more alive and not just so flat. Now obviously if you don't have an old book that you can use, you can print pages of whatever you want. Now it's definitely easier to punch the hole before you crumple it, so keep that in mind. So that's why we punched our hole first. Okay, you have it there, you're gonna go ahead and slide the paper down and it's gonna sit right on top of the spacer, and then you're gonna do another spacer, and then you're gonna keep going. Now when I slide this piece down, I'm gonna turn it just a tiny bit. Doesn't have to be much, just a tiny bit. And we're gonna do another spacer. The spacers are kind of helping there be a little bit of a gap between the pages. I'm just going to turn each one a little bit different direction so they're not all perfectly lined up. Doing a spacer again, just a spacer between every single one. If some of them are wrinkled the same, you can kind of, you know, turn it so this one's going up, that one's going up, however, like that. That's why I didn't just hold them in one bunch and crumple them all together because I kind of wanted them to have different shapes. This one got a little bit torn. I love when things are like old and tattered, so the tears are fine with me. I kind of like that. Obviously, like I said, if you don't want yours to look tattered at all, you don't have to crumple them at all.
Okay, so that is all of our five inch ones. You can squeeze, if we get to the end and realize this is just not enough um, room and we haven't been able to fit our one inches, we can squeeze them down. Let's kind of see. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more sizes. And we have almost eight inches. So I might squish it down a little bit and make each size take up about an inch on the dowel rod, if that makes sense. You can also, I left a little bit of a gap. Hopefully you can see that. So you could squish it all the way down to the bottom if you want to. I wanted it to have a little bit of gap there. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the four and a half inch size. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. I'm gonna split them up and let's see for the heck of it if we can cut through all of them. Oh, that is not a problem. Okay, so with these scissors, I can easily cut through all like eight pieces of each size. So that's good to know. I was thinking I shouldn't do more than four, but I think this will work just fine. I kind of like these little shavings. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I feel like they'd be cute um, for gift wrapping or I'm not really sure what, but <laughs> I'm saving them off to the side for now in case I feel inspired to use them somehow. Okay, so now that I have it trimmed down, I'm going to just kind of with the bigger sizes, like I said, kind of measure the center so that way I know the hole punch is relatively in the right spot. So this is about four and a half inches. So I'm gonna do 2.25 in each direction and kind of get a center Okay, I'm gonna use my crop dial. Punch the center. And now I'm gonna kind of crumple them up. Now, if you have kiddos helping you, this is the part they're gonna love. How often are you allowed to just take uh, book pages and crumple them up, or any paper, really? <laughs> Usually we're told not to crumple paper. So now we're gonna go on with our next little spacer. And we're just gonna keep going. So this is really all there is to it, is just doing spacer and then another piece, spacer and another piece. Now obviously if you wanna make a much bigger tree, you can start with squares bigger than five inches. You can start with squares smaller and do like a teeny tiny one and start with three inch squares. So as I'm doing this, I'm actually leaving a little bit of a gap between the page below and the spacer above it. So that way when I put a new page on top of the spacer, there's kind of a gap giving a little bit of an air between the pages, helping to kind of give more like dimension and life to the tree. So I'm not just shoving them down and doing page spacer, page spacer, all smushed together. The, the job of the spacer is to kind of hold the page above it a little bit up off the page below it, if that makes sense. So if you kind of zoom in, you can kind of see that there are some gaps in here where the spacer is holding the page above it up off of the page below it. And hopefully you can kind of see in there. So they're not all crammed together really tight, if that makes sense. Okay, at this stage, there's um, a, actually a ruler on the crop dial if you wanna use it and it tells you, there's three different ones depending on which setting you're using. So now that it's not as big, I can kind of eyeball it this direction and then use the ruler for that direction if it makes sense. So I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it. Now at this point, you can kind of crimp down a little bit without going all the way and kind of get a good idea. So I love old book crafts. If you saw like my how to make pumpkin out of an old book, I love those kind of neutral um, using old book kind of crafts. But if you want more vibrant colors, of course you could use um, scrapbook paper or something like that to have more color. You could obviously do this and then spray paint it and just spritz it very light to give the outside edge green or, or brush it a little bit with a dry brush and some craft paint that's kind of diluted and kind of brush the edges. Now as we get to the top to hide the spacers, as these pieces get littler, we'll have to put them closer together. So it's looking really, really cute. 
We're so close to being done. So like I said at the top, you might have to put the spacers and the pages a little bit closer together to kind of hide the spacer so you can't see it. Okay, I'm gonna trim some of these down. Some of these I didn't punch perfectly in the center, which is fine for the bigger layers at the bottom, but for right where we are, I need this to be pretty small. So I'm gonna cut some of these spacers down a tiny bit, just so that you can't see them. You wanna kinda of hide them. I'm also kind of turning them in the direction of the page above them to kind of hide them. Okay, we're so close to being done. I'm gonna go ahead and trim down more of these because those last ones are so tiny that I really just don't want you to be able to see these at all. So I'm just gonna use scissors and cut them down pretty dang small. This is not an exact science at all, so just Some teeny tiny ones. So now we're moving into the one inch squares. They are tiny. I'm gonna try and cut them. Obviously they're gonna end up being smaller than one inch once I cut the zigzag pattern. You know what, now that I see it, I feel like I kind of need a size in between the one and a half and the one, there seems to be such a big difference. So I'm actually gonna cut some one and a fourth and see if that's a good size to be in between. So let's see, we kind of trim, trim the edge off just so we have plenty of words. And so I'm gonna cut it right at 1.25. I want the size to just be really gradual as it gets to the top and I feel like it was a little bit of a jump going from one and a half to one at the very tip top. So we're going to see if adding this 1.25 helps. I only did four to start with so let's just see how, where that gets us. I'm still using these teeny tiny spacers. That is definitely a better transition size. I'm gonna cut a few more spacers down, just real small. Okay, let's try adding a one inch now and see if it looks right. Okay, that looks better. So all I did was add four of the 1.25, one and a fourth inch into the mix. And I might not use all of my one inches, let's see. I need a few more teeny tiny. I'm cutting these down so tiny where it's just really right cut real close to the hole.
You've got to be careful when you're sliding it on that you don't shove it down too hard and then push all the pages below it down. You're kind of having to be gentle with it. Okay, I'm just going to play with the star and see if it looks like it's done once the star is on top. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is for this last piece, I kind of want to see about trimming it down a little bit smaller. I think that looks a little bit better just to have the top one be. Okay, y'all, I think I'm gonna go a little bit crazy. I'm gonna do the top, the tip top one, teeny, teeny, tiny from the book page. That way it fits really nice and tight underneath the star. So you can kind of play with yours. It's gonna depend on how big your star is, how big your top um, pieces are. The spacer is tiny. Okay, let's see. Okay, that looks perfect. So all we're gonna do, so hopefully you, you can see, it's kind of hard to see from the angle you're at, but the tree looks so cute, it's so full. Um, you can kind of go through and fluff it up and it, even if you wanna like, like I could definitely move some down, but I could also raise them up and kind of fill up the bottom and raise it up from the bottom a little bit so there's more gap in the bottom and fluff it in the center. You can mess with it however you want. I'm gonna go ahead and Glue the very the star on the very tip top. So I'm just gonna put a dot of hot glue right on the very tip top of the tree. I already have my hot glue gun getting warm, and I'm just going to hold the star on here while it dries. So, like I said, at the very end, if you want to raise some up or bring some down and kind of fluff it up, you are more than welcome to do that. But it looks so cute. It's um, not a very long little craft. I love doing upcycled crafts where you're using old books or old items you might have sitting around. Okay friends, so that's it. Like I said, I will link all the supplies that I use in the description below this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more videos. Bye. She's crafty and she knows it. She's crafty and she knows it. She's crafty and she knows. She's crafty and she knows. Uh, 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 uh